Let's take a look at a quick way to create neon text from an Illustrator file or an EPS file. What I'm going to do is head over to File, Import, EPS, and I'm just going to go and pick an Illustrator file. It could be an EPS file as well. Okay, and then I can pick my curve division level. Well, since we're going to be creating a neon glowing type effect on uh, this object, uh, I'm going to go ahead and go with standard. I don't need as many, uh, I don't need as much detail in my curve as I would if I was creating a 3D logo, where I'd usually go with something like fine or super fine. And for convert to, instead of closed polys, let's use poly lines. We're just going to create two point polygons. Uh, which will just create lines, but then we're going to take it a step further and make them more like neon tubes. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And we've got this uh, Mountain Pew logo created by uh, John Telford. And I'm just going to delete some of the uh, the elements that I, I really don't need uh, and just go for the bare minimum here. OK, so that'll work. So as you can see, it's just a bunch of uh, two-point polys. If I go into wireframe and select you'll see nothing but um, two-point poly, so there's no faces on it. So if I go to texture, you'll see there's no faces. And uh, it's a little thin for neon tubing, but we don't need to waste geometry on the neon tubing when we can give it a nice glow effect in layout. So I'm going to go ahead and save this. Let's just give it a name. And I'll save that off. And let's send it over to layout. Okay, I've got it in layout. I'm going to take my camera just kind of position my camera, get a nice little angle on there. Okay. And of course we can, once we get it set up, we can change the angle to anything we want. I'm going to go over to the surface editor and for that surface, let's uh, change the color. Let's use uh, blue and then let's add some luminosity. We want to brighten up the surface. I'm going to crank it up to 125, just something bright. And you can see in OpenGL, it's, it's much brighter now. I'm going to go over to the advanced tab and under glow intensity, I'm going to up that to 100% as well. Now, the thing about glow intensity is it's not going to take uh, it's not going to take effect until we tell it to in Control F8, which is our processing tab, and I'm going to enable glow. It's a post process, so we need to we need to tell it uh, to go ahead and take advantage of of that setting. Let's do a render. Okay, and as you can see, we're starting to get some glow on there. Let's up that glow. I'm going to do 100% on the glow, on the intensity. Okay, so we start getting much brighter there. I'm going to tone that down a bit. Let's try uh, 80%. Okay, and let's go ahead and go to Camera, Properties, and let's add some anti-aliasing. I'm going to add a, a level of 6, 6 passes. Okay, and we start to see some nice little neon going on. Now with anti-aliasing, I've decided that I do want to crank this up. I'm going to say 120. Okay, I like that better. So now we've got some neon text going on here, but I want to just spice it up just a little bit. So what I'm going to do is uh, let's go ahead and close this and close this, and I'll just slide this out of the way. And I'm going to add a light. So let's go light. We'll just use a point light, and uh, I'm just going to call it Glow. I'm going to raise it up to right about here. Now, let's see what happens when we do the render. Okay, We're not really seeing anything. Okay, So what I want to do is I want to be able to see that light right here. So I'm going to go over to Light Properties, and I'm going to turn on Lens Flare. So let's go over to D for Display Options. And I'm going to go over to OpenGL Lens Flares and turn them on. Okay, and I can see back here we got a an OpenGL Lens Flare going on. That's not really what I want though. So I'm going to go ahead and change the light color to the same color blue we used earlier. But there's still this red outer glow that I'm not excited about. So I'm going to go to Lens Flare Options, and I'm going to turn on. I'm going to turn that uh, ring off and the red outer glow off, and let's do a render. And now we can see. It looks like that's almost like a light source in there. We could have as many as we want. We could also um, animate that light moving as if it's light pulsing through there. Let's uh, let's intensify this a bit. Let's try 100. Okay, you can see it intensify in OpenGL, which is kind of a nice little touch there. Okay, and so there we go. It's a little, it's a bit much. So I'm going to lower that to uh, 70. 
and there we go. So one of the things that uh, that is good to know when working with glow or uh, lens flares is that they're not going to show up in your alpha. See now I just get the the line there and it's it's nothing like what we're seeing here. So what you need to do is go over to control F8 come to add image filter and choose flare to alpha. Okay, It's not just for lens flares it's also going to work with glow so if I go ahead and do a render we can see our render and if I come over to alpha we're able to save out this alpha of the glow and the uh, lens flare as well. So that's a handy little tip for working with uh, lens flares and glow uh, if you want to take advantage of the alpha. So that's just a quick look at taking an EPS file or an Illustrator file, loading it up and converting it into two-point polys that we can later go into layout and turn into neon lights.